Praise God. I'll tell you what, I never get tired of that song. That's become our theme song. We are a house of miracles. We personally have been seeing, don't start there. We personally have been seeing God move supernaturally in our lives, in our ministry. Uh, it's it's so <laughs> such an exciting time to be alive and to watch what God is doing. And uh, we're just going to continue with worship here. I welcome you. In the name of Jesus, Pastor Bill Emmons here, Covenant Faith Center, CFC Ministries International. Some people know us by Covenant Faith Center, name of our church. Some people know us the other way because you're international. <laughs> but we're good to have you with us. And I'm telling you, God is doing great things. And I'm excited about what God is doing. And uh, this next song uh, then sings my soul. It's, it's um, not your traditional version of it. But it is worship, and I'm all about worship. Uh, so we're not going to pick songs that uh, don't uh, deal with worship. And uh, I want you to join us and uh, worship with us, and not just be an observer. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs>
Praise God. Hallelujah. Sometimes you just need to bask in the presence of the Lord and the Holy Spirit. And uh, I'll tell you, that song will do it. Uh, it's, I told you it wasn't your traditional song. Uh, you know, that uh, the title of it, Then Sings My Soul, we think about an old-time Pentecost song. Uh, a little bit different, but it's a, like I said before, that song, it, it's about worship. And uh, that time, that seven and a half minutes or so of time during that song, uh, you can get into some great worship. And I want to continue with that. Um, the next song that we're going to do, uh, you're familiar with, but I felt like it's something, we, we played it about three weeks ago. I felt like it's something we need to sing again. So uh, as I set this up, I want you to continue to worship and um, don't allow anything to distract you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. Just about ready. Okay, band. Worship team. Here we go. <laughs> I raise a My weapon is a man. 
tell you that's another song that will really bless you uh it's uh <laughs> during during the covid shutdown uh which was um what a year and four months or something like that uh we there was um two songs that really sustained us that um i gotta turn my mic on here <laughs> there were two songs that really sustained us uh at our congregation during that time uh, Raise a Hallelujah and Waymaker. And both of them just so powerful, so anointed. And God continues to give us new songs that uh, lift us up and uh, bring us into the presence of God. We enter into God's gates with thanksgiving into his courts with praise. Mm -hmm. And as we praise the Lord, praise the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, <laughs> The Bible says that our praise stops the enemy and stills the avenger. The devil cannot stay in the presence of praise to God. And it's important that uh, you understand that. And when you don't feel like it the most is when you need it the most. And you, you just do it by faith. You begin to praise God by faith and let, let your voice go up to the Father. Let it go up into heaven, into the, into the Holy of Holies, in the very presence of God. See, you're not bribing God. You're not uh, pushing or forcing God. What you're doing is you're just worshiping the Father. And I don't know about you, but uh, as a father and now a grandfather, uh, I find that uh, when my kids or my grandkids uh, bless me uh, by, you know, appreciating me and so forth, uh, it puts me in a, a position where I want to do something for them. And I think God is a father, you know, he, he wants to bless us. And when we start worshiping, I, I think there's a, a sense there of a fatherhood in God that we get it from that uh, he just wants to bless us. Now he wants to bless us all the time, but uh, I think worship has a big part of that. Besides the fact that it stops the enemy, it stills the avenger. It lifts your spirits. It encourages you. You can't sing songs like we've just sung for 30, 40 minutes, an hour, which sometimes you need to do. And at the end of it, still be down. By the end of that, and, sing, and you got to sing songs of faith. You can't sing, you know, those, those uh, old songs that you used to sing religiously years ago that, uh, you know, deal with, uh, you know, things like the devil just, uh, or God's just trying me or testing me, but it's all for my good. I don't know if that was ever used in a song, but you know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of songs that give you that essence or that, that understanding. Uh, God is not a problem. He is waiting for us to come to him. And the devil, like I said, cannot stand it when we start praising God. Hallelujah. Well, again, welcome. This is Pastor Bill Emmons, Covenant Faith Center, CFC Ministries International. And uh, 
we've we've had such a blessed week. Uh, I, you know, this is this is my favorite time of the year. I mean, I I have a good year all year every year, but I really enjoy this time of the year. Um, you know, you got the combination of of course everybody's in preparation for Christmas. We have what two weeks now. Uh, the the second Sunday from now is Christmas Day, and uh, in fact, just uh, kind of a pre. Uh, possible announcement. <laughs> I'm considering doing our broadcast on Saturday, uh, which is Christmas Eve, uh, in the afternoon, because I don't want to interfere with people's plans for maybe a uh, Christmas Eve service or the Sunday morning Christmas service if they're attending a church where that's going on. So I'm considering that. So we'll let you know for sure uh, next Sunday. Uh, but we're glad you're here today. And I'm excited. I'm going to turn Pastor Mary loose on you. And uh, so I'm going to shift the camera over. Oh, what's that? You ready? I'm ready. She's ready. All right. <laughs> Praise God. Here we go. Good morning. Uh, good morning, church. Well, what I have to say is just uh, this is the day the Lord hath made. We are rejoicing. We're glad in it. And God that began that good work in you, he's bringing it to full completion right up to the time of his return, developing, perfecting it, and bringing it to full completion in Jesus' name. So whatever you believe in God for today, don't get off your faith. Believe it all the way to the end till you see the manifestation because God is never late. He's always on time. He keeps his word to those that stay in faith and believe him for it. Have a blessed day. And uh, she's still on camera, so she's not going to do embarrassing things. And that's because I have to switch the, the lights and uh, get things set up the way it's supposed to be. So now we go back to me, and here I am. Hallelujah. Um, we have a little bit extra light today because I decided not to close the, the window. We've got blackout curtains over the window uh, and that's mainly in the summer and we have a lot of bright light coming in and, uh, Sunday morning, sometimes in the summer, it's just really bright and it throws all of our camera, you know, everything off. So we put up blackout curtain right now. We got overcast. We've had overcast conditions for a week now. I think we had about two hours of, of clear and sunny skies. The sun was going down, uh, one day this past week, we had rain. Uh, we got snow. Uh, they, they predict snow. I don't know if uh, is it next week. Uh, anyways, in the next few days. Uh, but I know all of you up in the northern states, you're getting snow right now. I've, I, w I watch the uh, uh, weather map each night. And um, I, I do that for a reason. I want to know if there's anything coming our way so I can use my faith and put a stop. Because Jesus, uh, the Bible says, whatever you bind is bound. Now you need to get a hold of this. You're responsible. You have a spiritual sphere of influence wherever you are. And you have a responsibility to use your faith, not just for you, not just for your family, but for your community, for where you live, uh, in your, your city, uh, your county, your state, your nation. And uh, the Bible says, whatever we bind is bound. And whatever we loose or allow is loosed or allowed. So I look at the weather map every night to see what's, you know, heading this way. If I see a big storm pattern, then I bind up uh, extreme weather. I bind up extreme wind, extreme uh, hail, uh, tornadoes, anything that could cause damage, could cause harm, that could cause uh, fear and anxiety even. Uh, I bind up earthquakes. Uh, there was predicted a, a, a good-sized earthquake that was going to happen supposedly. Uh, here in Oklahoma, I bound that up. I said, no, no, this is my land. This is my state now. And I bind that up in the name of Jesus. And uh, it did not happen as predicted. Uh, and the guy that predicts these things, he has a scientific method he uses, and he's very, very accurate. But what that doesn't take into account is us believers who know how to use our faith. Amen? So we watch the, uh, I watch the weather report each night to see what's coming our way. If I see, like I said, any extreme weather, I bind it up ahead of time. And I lose peace, peace upon the land, peace upon the atmosphere. I lose peace because whatever we lose or allow is, is, is loosed or allowed. And so I lose peace upon this house, this land, this community, this city, 
this state, this nation. This is my nation, and I lose peace upon this nation. And I expect miracles to take place and turnarounds to take place where needed. Amen? Amen. All right, so I uh, wanted to let you know about that. And um, I think what we ought to do is get um, our uh, is, not, is it Instagram, yeah, Instagram. We've got so many social media platforms going right now. It's, uh, sometimes I get uh, a little twisted which one is which. Instagram, we're going to invite our Instagram family on with us right now. And um, as you can see out my window behind me, uh, winter has set in. Um, <clears throat> winter is here anyway. <laughs> Praise God. Anyway, uh, good to have you with us, Instagram family. Glad you are here today. And anybody that tunes in after the fact, the anointing is no less after the fact of the live broadcast than it is during the live broadcast. <clears throat> There's no time or distance in the spirit realm. And the anointing is a spiritual force, power that goes forth in the word. As we minister the word in song and in teaching and preaching, the anointing is on the word. And the Bible says the anointing destroys the yoke. So it doesn't matter when you listen or watch this broadcast, uh, it's still the word and it's still anointed. And you need to understand that, that you didn't miss anything. It's nice when you tune in live. It's nice when I can look down here on my monitor and see people's names there that are watching. That, that's nice. And I, and I appreciate comments when you put comments in there. Um, but if you can't, I had somebody uh, text me this week and says, well, I'm going to be visiting a, a church this week and with a friend and uh, I won't be there for uh, your live broadcast, but I'll watch it when I get home. Well, praise God that they're watching. That's the important thing. In fact, I want to give you some exciting news. You know our goals, if you've been following us at any length of time, you know our, our goal has been 20,000 viewers per week. We, as of about a half hour, about, about maybe 45 minutes ago, we have reached 19,009 viewers uh, this past week. And I count everything up to beginning this service. And I usually uh, do that I count, if I can have time, about 30 minutes before this service starts. And so we've reached over 19,000 people this week. And uh, our goal has been 20,000. So after we have two or three weeks at 20,000, I up my goal and the next goal will be 25,000. Mm -hmm. And so why do you, what's the numbers all about? The numbers are about people. Every number represents either one person or possibly their family. Uh, there's, you know, average of three people in every household. So if we got 20,000 uh, people that are viewing this, it could be as high as 60,000. I'm not saying that it is, but uh, it's, it's many times usually more than the actual numbers we see. So as we reach more people, what happens? More people get healed, more people get saved, more people get filled with the Spirit, more people get uh, the bondages in their life broken, uh, more people learn the deeper things of God, uh, then they, they get to see a ministry that is producing results through the gifts of the Spirit, and word of knowledge, word of wisdom, whatever, you know, the, the, the gift of faith, the working of miracles, whatever the gifts are that the Holy Spirit wants to manifest and are needed for that, that moment of time. So it's important that we reach people. We're doing our, our effort and our best to reach as many people as we can. And a lot of our growth has been because you guys that watch us have done what we've asked you to do, which is uh, like uh, and follow and subscribe and uh, get notified and share. And sharing is one of the biggest things because that expands the possibility of reaching more people. And so I'm going to ask you to do that again. Uh, we're getting some good results on uh, some of our social media platforms. I'd like to see YouTube uh, get more response. Uh, if you would, uh, and this is how, how we get more people touched with the word. If you go on YouTube and you type in Pastor William Emmons, make sure you see this face before you do anything. Uh, then uh, you like and share and subscribe and, and all the things that it gives you. And if you want to know uh, when we're going to be on the air, uh, make sure you click the, the um, 
what, what they call the bell. It's a, a notification bell, and uh, that will let you know. So if you go to YouTube and do that, that would be great. Uh, Twitter's doing okay. Uh, you know, it's pretty good, but you can go to Twitter. And uh, on Twitter, uh, you can find me by going to Twitter and typing in William Emmons, or you can just do the short uh, shortcut, the at symbol, and it's WRDMN777, and that should take you to my page. Instagram uh, is increasing. Uh, Instagram, you find me at uh, William E. Emmons, or the shortcut is Emmons, E-M-M-O-N-S dot W. Okay. On, uh, let's see. Uh, we're doing good on LinkedIn. Uh, I've been kind of surprised on that. Uh, every week we're, we're getting new numbers on LinkedIn. is doing very well. Uh, Clout Hub, uh, Gitter, Getter, um, BitChute. BitChute's doing pretty good. I'd like to see that continue to increase. On BitChute, uh, we're at Wordman, W-O-R-D-M-A-N-789, and that's capitalized W. Uh, and uh, go there and, and like and follow and subscribe and all the things that you do there. Uh, Rumble, I'd like to see more traction on that. And Rumble, you can find us, uh, it's an app. You can do, uh, use the Rumble app or go to rumble.com and just type in uh, lowercase W-R-D-M-N. 777. So those are the ones that I'd like to get some more traction on. And again, as you like and as you share and all those things you can do, uh, that will get more exposure to more people. And we'll just keep this thing growing. Um, I have some lofty goals. When I say lofty, I mean big. Uh, I, I, um, I'd like to think I think more like God. Uh, I'd see the big picture. And uh, so we're going to, we're, I think we're going to fly right past 20,000, 25,000 and on up to 100,000 views. And um, one of the good things that really helps that growth is people that are followers. And, and that's and since you follow us on whatever social media platform you're on. And uh, that helps. So, all right, with that, let me give you your prosperity scripture for this week. Uh, in uh, Philippians 4, 19, it says, There is no lack, for my God supplies all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now, most of you should know that. But if you don't, learn it. <laughs> and uh, like I tell you, begin to confess it, begin to declare it every day. Amen. That's how you get these things down inside of you, down in your heart. Praise God. All right. Um, Somebody sent me a uh, text this week and said, uh, I guess they didn't know that uh, if I talk during worship or something that I can, or if I sing during worship, I can be heard. Well, let me share with you. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six microphones. Uh, there's one in every camera and there's one on my, right here on my, in front of me and which I usually keep off until worship is over. But these camera, these camera uh, microphones are so sensitive, uh, they pick up, you know, those things. Even during worship, if I sneeze or cough, or, that's why I actually get up and leave for a moment and go cough or, you know, whatever I need to do and come back in. Uh, so just so you understand, they're going to pick something up. Even if I shut off all the microphones, only had the one on. Uh, it's still that sensitive. It would pick up any any so sounds that we make. So uh, it's just one of those things we got to kind of live with. And uh, we will be our sensitive to any sounds we make and try and keep it where uh, we're not disturbing worship. Amen. All right. Uh, this morning, let's see. I want to make sure I got all the announcements I wanted out of the way. And um, the title, if you're taking notes, and I hope you are, uh, the Creator's Love, Part Two, and um, this is actually—I <laughs> know that I can lose you in this sometimes, but this is actually Part Six of uh, a sub series, which is the Law of the Spirit of Life. Uh, the Bible says the Law of the Spirit of Life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Part of understanding the Law of the Spirit of Life is understanding the love of God 
and how God's love impacts humanity uh, and how lo his love can change you, change your life, change your family, change everything around you. And I'm not talking about the, uh, the religious idea of love, you know, where we go to church on Sunday morning and we give everybody a big smile and a big hug and, you know, that, that uh, Christian, you know, hug, you know, where we reach right and pat them on the back. Um, the love, love of God goes far beyond that. And uh, so we talked about this a little bit last week. We're going to talk about it some more today. And by the way, this then becomes a sub, a sub series, because <laughs> this is part of a longer series called The Deeper Walk. And this is actually part 80, 80. That means we've been doing this uh, series for two and a half years, roughly. Uh, no, longer than that, right, Pastor Mary? Uh, let's see. Well, 52 weeks, 104 weeks. So, okay, so we've been doing a year and a half, whatever it might be. It doesn't matter. We're in a long series here. And uh, then we get into these sub-series. Get on, I, I go to prepare a message, and it becomes a series because Holy Spirit brings things up in my thinking and shows me other scriptures I hadn't looked at before. So let me give you Romans 8, 2, King James translation. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus made me free from the law of sin and death. I, I confess that and declare that over myself, over my wife, over my family, uh, over my partners. Uh, just about every day. Uh, there's hardly a day goes by that I don't declare that. Uh, because, I mean, you stop and look at it, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has done what? Made me free from the law of sin and death. And we had to go over and study the law of sin and death to find out what that meant. So we'd appreciate the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Now, John chapter 13, verse 34, in King James translation, Jesus said, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. All right, and then 1 John 2, 7, he says, brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which you have heard from the beginning, the old commandment, is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Well, that that commandment that is referring back to the Ten Commandments originally, because the original Ten Commandments talks about loving God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your body, you know, in other words, your spirit, soul, and body, and then love uh, your neighbors as yourself. And Jesus quoted that when he said, I give you a new commandment, but it's not a new commandment. Uh, and he said, uh, the, these first two commandments on, on the first two commandments, hang all the law and, and even all the prophets. Um, what does that mean? It means love is the bottom line. Love is a power force. And when you walk in true biblical love, Christian love, it's, it's forgiving, it's kind, it, it's, uh, the Bible says love believes the best of every person instead of believing the worst. Uh, we've read, we read it, it, I think, last week or the week before. Uh, if you want to go back and read 1 Corinthians 13, uh, that, that's called the love chapter. Uh, do that and see what love really is. And you say, well, how do I manifest that love? How do I, how do I show it? Well, the more you walk with God, the more time you spend praying in the Spirit, the more time you spend meditating the Word of God, the more your mind gets renewed. The, the more your emotions come under subjection to the word of God, uh, the, the more uh, your will is conformed to the will of God. And eventually you keep at it. You, you finally subject your body to the word of God so that your body, the flesh is not allowed to do what it just wants to do. So over time, uh, again, this is not just going to church on Sunday mornings. This is living a Christian life. Every day, spending time in prayer, fellowshipping with the Father, fellowshipping with Jesus. You know, every morning I wake up, and I, and you may think this is silly, but I, ever since uh, a year and four months ago, approximately on August eighth, uh, two thousand and twenty-one, uh, my heart stopped and I died, and I was in heaven immediately. I, I had no sense of being in my body or out. 
Uh, everybody asks me, what did you see? What did you see? Well, I can tell you, but uh, I want to leave it as to be a surprise for you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I saw the most beautiful things I've ever seen. And I didn't see even, but it was just a glimpse of heaven. But, um, and then uh, God brought me back. And uh, I spent eight days in the hospital and walked out on the eighth day. And uh, by the way, eight is uh, a, a number that uh, represents in the Hebrew language completion, uh, wholeness. <laughs> I like that. And I walked out. Oh, man, I'm going to choke up here in a minute. I walked out on the eighth day, complete and whole in the name of Jesus. Anyway, um, the way we walk in love is to start... The Bible says, being imitators of God, follow his example. Mm -hmm. And we went over that, those scriptures that talk about that. <clears throat> That's all part of this series. If you make up your mind and be determined to walk like God, it's going to go uh, so far beyond what you've imagined up this point, because you're going to have to walk by faith. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it takes faith to love some people. You, you do know that. Uh, you're going to have to begin to speak and use your words that agree with the word of God instead of speaking whatever comes off the top of your head. <laughs> That's too many people get in trouble. I just give a piece of my mind. That's the problem with some people. They're giving away too much of their mind. <laughs> they got nothing left. All right. Um, so the law of love is the underlying law. that and, and law does not mean a legalistic thing like we think of the Ten Commandments and the Old Testament. Uh, the word law here is principle. You could also use the word force or power. Love is the underlying force or power that releases the power of God, that releases healing into our lives, that releases blessing. Uh, even prosperity uh, is released in your life through the power of love, walking in love toward people. And like I said, it's not a put on, made up kind of thing. It's something that grows inside you as you spend more time with the Father. Amen. All right. And I'm going to, I'm going to make a statement here that might surprise you, uh, especially if you've done what some people got rebuked for in Galatians. Paul rebuked the Galatian church because they, they were set free by faith in Jesus and then got religious and went back into the law and began to live by the law. And he rebuked me, called them foolish. Oh, you foolish Galatians. Who's be, bewitched you? Who's bewildered you? Who's, who's deceived you? Uh, why? Because they went back, instead of living, walking by grace and by faith, they went back to the law, very legalistic, very harsh, very impossible to do. Now, here's my statement that might surprise you. The law was actually given out of love. How in the world is that possible? Well, <laughs> here's a simple verse you all know. John 3, 16, but I'm not going to stop at verse 16. I'm going to read three verses. I want you to hear this from the Passion Translation. In John 3, 16 through 18, for this is how much God loved the world. Now stop there. Who did God love? The world. It didn't say, for God so loved the righteous. It didn't say for God so loved the Christian because there was no Christians before Jesus was raised from the dead and the day of Pentecost manifested. So, so when it says God loved the world, it's talking about God's love for humanity. Remember that every human being is here because of God's love in the beginning. God made Adam and Eve to fellowship and share his great love with with a being that had a choice that could choose to reject or accept, but could share that great love and express to somebody like him, remember we're created in his image, and somebody that was created to be able to fellowship with him. And God loved his creation. It's just like, you know, if I can put it in in little context that we might identify with, I have, you know, six children. Pastor Mary and I have six children. I didn't give birth to one of them. As you know, men cannot give birth. All right. Uh, we have 11 grandchildren right now, and they are the neatest kids. Now the oldest one is, what, 22? 23. 23. See, they keep changing on me every year. Uh, she's 23, and I still call her a kid. She's my granddaughter, and, and I love her. 
I love every one of them all the way down to our youngest, uh, who's just uh, 14 months or so. And uh, every one of them are, they're a gem, they're special, they're, uh, you know, I just love it. I, I love my children. My, our son, uh, John, came over a couple days ago. I think it was Friday. It was a Friday morning he was over. And uh, uh, we sat down and talked for, he, he had to go do some jobs. He's got a business. And yet he took time. I made a comment. I said, man, I haven't seen you. I moved here to Oklahoma and I thought I'd get a chance to see you. And sometimes a week or two go by and I don't get to see you, you know. And he says, oh, I didn't know that. You know, I said, you're my son. I love you. I, I love to talk with you. I love to be around you. And so he said, we talked for a while before he just about an hour, I guess, before he took off, had to go do his, uh, the jobs that he had lined up. I love my kids. I love my grandkids. It's built into you to love your children. They are your creation, if I can say it that way, your offspring. Uh, they are created to a degree in your image. They, in some aspect, I mean, I, we're always, as our kids and grandkids grow and get older, we see uh, my side of the family, my, some of my, my, my um, uh, our youngest daughter's youngest son is named after me. I, I assume he is. His name is William. <laughs> but um, he's 17 years old now, and we get to talk, and, and it's amazing how much similarities there are between him and I. And uh, I'm sure that's the same way with our oldest son. And, and um, uh, we've got another grandson named William as well. Uh, there's characteristics that, that are transferred, even though you may not be in close contact with an individual, uh, because they're your offspring. Uh, there's something about them that carries on from you through uh, to your kids and through your kids to your grandkids and on down the line. Uh, so I understand it, to a degree why and how God can love us, even though sometimes we are not too pleasing. Sometimes we are not doing the things we ought to be doing. Sometimes it's a long time stretch between the last time and the next time we talk to God and fellowship with him. And, and God loves us so much. He wants to fellowship with us all the time. I don't know how he, he can do it. I don't know how when we get to heaven, he's going to be able to fellowship with everybody. But that's God. He can do it. Amen. All right. So for this is how much God loved the world. So remember, it's not just the righteous, not just the good. It's every human being that ever lived and ever will live. He gave his only son, his only unique son as a gift. So now everyone, everyone who what? Who believes in him and who? In Jesus. Who Everyone who accepts the son. Jesus, uh, everyone who believes in him will never perish, but experience everlasting life. In other words, when you get born again by making Jesus Lord of your life, you now receive everlasting life in the sense of real life. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody's going to live forever in one place or another. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, in case you can't figure it out, heaven's better than hell. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. Verse 17. Uh, God did not send his son into the world to judge or condemn the world, but to be its savior and rescue it. Get out, get away from this. God is judging this country. God is judging uh, my family. God's judging you because you did something. I've had people come up to me and accuse me of things I never did. And, and because we were going through maybe a challenge, they say, well, God's just judging you. You got some hidden sin going on or, you know, and I just smile, look at him and say, I mean, God is not judging me. All judgment is held to the end. The Bible says reserved to the final judgment. And it says here, God didn't send his son to the world to judge the world and condemn the world, but to be its savior. Well, he's my savior. How about you? Amen. So now there's no longer any condemnation to those or for those who believe in him. For the unbeliever already lives under condemnation because they do not believe in the name of God's beloved son. Now, when it says, because they do not believe, uh, or, or I'm sorry, back up, the unbeliever already lives under condemnation. Why? The Bible says that the devil is the accuser. Now, there's the scripture that says he's the accuser of the brethren. 
Anytime you start stepping toward God, the devil wants to accuse you and make you feel like you're unworthy, unrighteous, and you don't deserve. And there was a point in time he could accuse before God. Uh, and God put an end to that. The devil's not allowed in heaven. And, uh, but he'll accuse you. And so when, when you're not born again, you live a life under condemnation. Now you can have your conscience seared, like the Bible says, with a hot iron that you are so much into sin or evil, whatever it may be, rejecting God, that, uh, you know, you, you become your conscious, which is the voice of your spirit, uh, becomes seared or, and you know what that's like, it, um, <laughs> it's not good. But when your conscience becomes seared, it, it, it hinders you from hearing the voice of God, from hearing from God all, at all. Not that you can't, but you're, you're hearing something, but it's not God in most cases. It's really sad when somebody says, well, you know, I don't, I don't really believe in religion. I don't believe in God. And I don't. Well, do you believe in the devil? Do you believe there's a devil? Do you believe that there is uh, hell? Um, you know, some people say, well, this experience on earth is hell. This is hell on earth. This is the only hell we're ever going to experience. Well, it's not what the Bible teaches. The devil, the, the, the Bible says that hell was created for the devil and his angels. Those angels, one third of the heavenly host that followed Lucifer and, and rebelled against God. Well, God won't put up with rebellion. And so he cast them down to the earth. And this is far before Genesis chapter one and verse two, where God created the heavens and the earth. That's a recreation. I won't get into that today. <laughs> but sinners, and if you're not born again, you're a sinner, period. I don't care whether you like it or not. That the, the fact is you need to know you're a sinner. If you've not made Jesus Lord of your life, you are a sinner. There is nothing in between. <laughs> Say, Pastor, you're getting pretty harsh. I thought you were a real loving guy. And I am. I, man, I am. A, I'm a loving guy. But I love you enough to tell you the truth. If I don't tell you the truth, then the love of God is not in me. Because the love of God compels me to tell you the truth. All right. So you say, well, what do I do about that? How, how, how do I, can you talk about this new birth or getting born again or getting saved or whatever? Let me tell you, I'm going to make it really simple for you. The Bible says that if you will believe in your heart, in other words, you got to make a choice to believe something. It's always a choice. If you will choose to believe that God raised Jesus from the dead and confess with your mouth words that Jesus is Lord and particularly your Lord, you will be saved. Well, but he's not my Lord. I, I haven't believed in him. Well, you have to, again, it's a choice. You have to decide you're going to believe in him because there's too many of us believers around to ignore and think that, oh, that's just a bunch of fanatics. No, millions, millions throughout history, billions throughout history of Christians. And this is not for some made up religion. God is alive. God is real. Jesus paid the price for our sins. So here's what you do. You pray this simple prayer. I'm going to say it. It'll be on Record on the message. You can go back and listen to it and pray it yourself. And it's, it's very and it's, it's not a set thing written down. It's got to come out of your heart. But here's the way I, I would do it. Father, God, I come to you and I make a choice today. I make a choice to receive this Jesus who you said is the Savior of mankind. And I receive him now. Jesus, I'm calling upon you. The Bible says, if I call upon the name of the Lord, I'll be saved. So Jesus, I call upon you now. Come into my heart. Recreate me, change me, make me new. I receive you now. And I now declare before heaven and hell that I have made Jesus Lord of my life. And the Bible says, if I do that, I will be saved. So I declare as of this moment, I am saved I am born again. I'm not going to go to hell when I die. I'm going to go to heaven when I die. You see it? What am I doing? It's coming out of my spirit. It's a, it's a prayer where you're giving your life to God and accepting the sacrifice he made in Jesus on your behalf. Amen. All right, let's go on. The law was given. Now I said the law was actually given out of love. So John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his son. Well, the law was the precursor to redemption. 
It promised a redemption, but also showed you you couldn't get there on your own. <clears throat> Excuse me, that you needed help to get there. Anybody that tries to live by the law is going to fail miserably. The law is a shadow. It's the point toward the solution. Uh, the, it, in the New Testament, it, the Bible says that all the law is fulfilled in Jesus. And the, it's, it's, if you can say it this way, it's been folded up like an old garment and put away. And the new has come. And when you get born again, the Bible says you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. One translation says a new species of being. All right, that, that makes you unique, makes you one of a kind. Now, we may be brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, because we're all uh, those of us that are born again, but you are unique in the eyes of God. You are special in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. All right, so the law was given to show mankind the way. Say, so how does it show man the way? Well, let's put it this way. <laughs> well, I, every time I think about, I say that, I think about this. If you ever seen Veggie Tales uh, animation, the cartoons, Christian cartoons, really good for little kids. Um, one of them, uh, the the one character says, "I think this is the way," and the other character says, "I don't think this is the way." <laughs> well. The law shows us first that we can't do it. We can't become righteous on our own. That we, we've, we've got to somehow uh, accept God's help to have right standing. Righteousness simply means right standing with God. It doesn't mean you're perfect. Now you're, you're in the process of being a perfected, but you're not perfect yet. And somebody I had a young guy come to me one time, wanted to argue with me. He had his entourage, his little groupie, groups with him, group groupies <clears throat> with him and he wanted to impress them. So he's going to go up and challenge the pastor. And he comes up and he says, I have one question for you. I said, what's that? He says, are we perfect? Well, at, at, I, I stopped for a minute and I realized this is a setup here. He wants to show how, how smart he is in front of his groupies, you know? And I said, well, in your spirit, yes. Your spirit, man, if you're born again, you are perfect spiritually. You are a perfect recreation of Christ Jesus, and you have the life of God, the nature of God in you. But you've got to deal with the soul, and you've got to deal with the flesh. That's why the Bible says that we receive that we're to receive with meekness the engrafted word, which has the power to save your soul. He's not talking about getting saved, he's talking about changing your mind, will, and emotions. That's something that has to happen after you're born again. And then the Bible talks about don't allow your body, your, your flesh, to be instruments of sin. He's talking to believers in the New Testament. Paul writes that. Don't let your bodily members be instruments of sin. Well, if I'm perfect, then I can't sin. No, no, you can sin. All you got to do is let your flesh control you. Let your emotions, let your reasoning control you. And you can get off into sin really quick. All right. So no, we are not perfect in the soulish realm or the fleshly realm. We are perfect in the spirit realm, in the spirit man. We are a spirit being. We have a soul, mind, will, and emotions to be able to live in this realm that we're in. And we have a body to be able to contact this realm that we're living in. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. So uh, the law basically showed us that we needed to turn from sin because that's what the law was about. Repent, turn from sin. And here's how you do it. Thou shalt, thou shalt, thou shalt not, thou shalt not turn from sin, okay? Uh, to God, and eventually through the promised Redeemer. But man, as I said, needed help, couldn't do it as, on his own. But God gives the law to teach us. He gave the sacrificial system to, to teach us about uh, our sins being uh, covered in that case in the Old Testament it was for just for the past year. Uh, but it was to point toward a final sacrifice that would cover us, not just, not just cover us, but eliminate sin and the penalty for sin for all men for all time. The only thing is all, men have to, men and women, teenagers, kids, whatever, they have to accept it. 
They have to accept this Redeemer, Jesus, the Son of God, as their Lord and Savior. Amen? So then God gives the final sacrifice, and that's Jesus. Jesus was the fulfillment of the law. He kept the whole law. Nobody else in all of humanity and all of history was ever able to keep the whole law. That's why there was a sacrificial system, because nobody could do it. Nobody was perfect in the spirit yet. And so God gave them a way to cover that sin for the past year and then start fresh, you know, the next year. Well, Jesus didn't cut, do it just for a year. Jesus gave us a, a, a way out of the sin, the guilt, the condemnation, and the eternal death by the blood of Jesus. Jesus paid the price, the one perfect human being that never yielded sin. He was tempted at all points like we've been, but he did not yield to it. He paid the price. See, only a man could pay the price for man. An animal, a lamb, could not pay the price for man. It had to be the Lamb of God. Paul calls and, and um, John the Baptist both refer to Jesus as the Lamb of God, the Passover Lamb. What, what was he? He was the final sacrifice. And all those sheep, those lambs that were sacrificed before Jesus were always pointing toward the Redeemer. Even when Israel came out of Egypt uh, and, and there was Passover and God says, take a lamb, one for the whole house. And if there's not enough people to consume the lamb, invite your neighbors in. And the, the illustration was there in that lamb. The whole lamb was to be received into the people. And the, if that whole lamb was received as a sacrifice instead of them, it was their substitute sacrifice, then they, the death angel would not be able to have any part in them. Amen. And they walked out of Egypt. Well, that's a, a picture, a pictorial illustration of, of what Jesus has done for us. We get born again, we receive the whole lamb. And when we receive the whole lamb, that death angel that brings spiritual death, emotional death, mental death, physical death, financial death, that death angel that's been assigned against us has no power over us. And he, he has to pass on to somebody else because he has no power. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus again, has done what? Made me free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. I'm doing better preaching. You are amen. I want to hear some amens. Oh, you're on the internet. Okay. <laughs> give me some, give me some uh, comments. Say amen. Praise God in the comments. All right. Galatians 3:13 through 14, King James translation. Christ hath, past tense, redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone. I'm going to talk to you about that for a minute, in a minute. Everyone hangeth on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. The Gentiles it simply means people without God. It doesn't mean necessarily non-Jews. It's just people without God, because they figure the Jews had the God, the only God, the God of creation. But I don't care if you're Jew or, or uh, not Jew. Uh, you know, you could be Jewish, born, you know, and bloodline of the Jews. But if you're not born again, you don't have God. And, and because that was ended with Jesus, that, that Old Testament sacrificial system. And that was ended with Jesus. You're waiting for the Messiah. He's already come. <clears throat> and he paid the price. And, and us that are called Christians have received him as our Savior. And if you're Jewish, you need to make Jesus Lord of your life. If, if you're Muslim, I don't care what you've been taught up to this point. There's only one Savior. Only one way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. You need to make Jesus Lord of your life. If you're Buddhist, if you're Hindu, if you're, uh, and you can just go on and name all the other religions that are out there. The bottom line is you need to make Jesus Lord of your life. Receive him as Lord and Savior. And through him and him alone is salvation. Bible says there's no, under, no other name under heaven by which men might be saved. And the name is Jesus. They say, well, but it's different in different languages. Well, then when you translate it, it still comes back to, in the Jewish language, Yeshua. Okay? Savior. So you need to make Jesus Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we're doing good on time. I was wondering if we were getting close to being out of time here. Okay. Um, so we were reading Galatians 3, 13 and 14. So that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles or on the people without God. 
uh, through Jesus Christ so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. That promise of the Spirit is not talking about the Holy Spirit, talking about the new birth, being born again, the Spirit of God dwelling in you. See, if you're living by the law, you don't have the Spirit of God in you. You may have, uh, from time to time, have the Spirit come upon you, but we want Him in us. Amen. All right, now, when it says, um, uh, uh, curse everyone that hangeth on a tree, I, I got a revelation a few weeks back. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. He says, if you read that right, you'll understand everybody hung on the tree in Jesus. Why? Because he was the representative of all mankind. Mm -hmm. So, and, and there's, in fact, there's a book, I don't have it here to show you, but there's a little book, a little mini book about the size of, you know, one of these. And uh, it's called In Him. And it's a great little book. I believe that was Kenneth Hagin's book. And uh, if I had quick, if I knew exactly where it was, I could pull it out. I've got it here somewhere. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's a great little book. Because the Bible says that we were in him. And, and that if, if the whole humanity were represented in him, then whatever he accomplished, he accomplished for the whole of humanity. Amen. So when you look at Jesus hanging on the cross in Galatians 3.13, it says, um, Cursed everyone that hangeth on the cross. We're, you, know, you stop and look at that. Well, wait a minute. Uh, so the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Well, not everybody's hung on a cross. Even in Jesus' day, not everybody was crucified. What in the world does that mean? It means that when Jesus hung on the, on the cross, everybody in humanity that would ever be hung on the cross in him. That's a great revelation. Mm -hmm. Now I went back and I looked at the Hebrew word there and it's pas, P-A-S. And it's a primary word. It means all. It means any. It means every. It means the whole. All, any, one. All, uh, you know, or anyone. Everyone. As many as. In other words, as many as will choose. And whosoever. Mm -hmm. So it, it's represented all. It's available to all but only whosoever decides to receive Jesus and make him Lord are going to receive the blessings of Abraham, which was the promise of the new birth. You know, that, that's such a tremendous scripture. There's so much revelation in it that the blessings of Abraham might come upon us. Go back and read the blessings of Abraham. They are they're just tremendous blessings, but there's no curse for us. The Old Testament, there was also a curse. He redeemed us from the curse, it said. Well, not only do we have the blessings of Abraham, we got the blessings of Jesus. How do we know that? Because the Bible says we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. We got it all. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I mean, I'm about ready to get myself, preach myself excited here. All right. So Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ. See, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I but Christ liveth in me, and the life, life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, or in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I live by faith in the work of Jesus. Every time I pray, and, and you know, the, the doctors say, I have to take these three little pills, and, uh, and until they say I'm not supposed to, I don't have to anymore. I'm believing they're going to tell me that quick. But, uh, uh, you know, every time I take those pills, I, I, I pray to the Father. I, I say, Father, I, I want you to know my faith is not in the pills. Amen. My faith is in the work of Jesus, mm -hmm. who redeemed me from the curse, who bore my infirmities, my sickness, and my diseases upon his own body, so that by his stripes I was healed. Therefore, I am healed. Mm -hmm. And then I say, Father... My faith is in you as well, because you are my father and you care for me. I'm your child. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to care for a child. And then my faith is in you because you're almighty God, the only God, the God of creation. And I worship you as God. And then I said, but you're also my covenant partner. Amen. And you are a covenant keeping God, because when you made covenant, you swore by yourself, because there was nothing greater to swear by, mm -hmm. that you would keep the covenant promises. So I put complete trust and confidence in you, Father, that you keep your promise to me. And I stand boldly daily. Every day I, I declare the word of God over myself, over my body. I declare it over my wife, over my kids, over my grandkids, over my partners. 
And, and I say, Father, I trust you to keep your promises to us. I, 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 have to, I have to trust you. There's nothing else greater to trust or to trust in. And I say, so Father, I trust your written word, which I declare daily. And I trust your prophetic word to me regarding my healing. When I was in the hospital, you gave me a word. And it came through uh, our oldest son and his wife. And it was confirmed by what came out of my spirit when I became aware of what was going on. And I was in the hospital and I heard my youngest son talking to my oldest son in Australia. And what came out of me was, tell Will, I'm the binding man. You know, that's a 70s reference. Well, my son Will and his wife the night before had been praying for me. And God had spoken to them and told them, your dad's the bonding man, and he's coming back bigger, faster, and stronger than before, totally rebuilt from top to bottom. So I, I say, Father, I thank you. I have your written word I declare daily. I have your prophetic word, which I declare daily. And you're not a man that you should lie. And I fully declare and expect and believe that I am totally rebuilt from top to bottom. Okay. Every cell, every tissue, every organ of my body, from top of my head to the soles of my feet, that my heart is totally recreated and made new from the top of my heart to the bottom of my heart. And it's stronger and better than before in the name of Jesus. I declare that every single day. There's not a day goes by that I don't declare that. Why? Because I'm going to walk by faith in the covenant promises God has given me. I'm not going to let them slip. I'm going to keep them fresh in my mind, fresh on my lips, and fresh in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. Romans chapter, excuse me, chapter 6, verse 13 King James translation. How much time I got left? You have time. It's Romans 3. Six, Romans three, 6. 3. 3? Yeah, not 13. But it says 6 3. 6 3, yeah. yeah. Romans 6, verse 3 through 14. Right. Okay. <laughs> A little miscommunication here. <laughs> know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? There you are. When he died, we died in him, all right? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. So when Jesus was put in the grave, we were in the grave with him. Amen. Now, we weren't there yet, but we were in him, mm -hmm. amen? So that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. When he was raised from the dead, spiritually, we were raised from the dead because we were in him. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection be, I'm sorry, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man, that old flesh, that old, well, the flesh controlled by the old dead spirit separated from God, mm -hmm. uh, the, um, the old man is crucified in him so that the body of sin might be destroyed. The old man is the, is the spiritual dead man. You were in, in the spirit. You were, you were dead. You're separated from God. You do not have the life of God in you. When you get born again, you get that. But that old man controls the flesh. And so he says, uh, let's see. Our old man is crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed. In other words, the flesh has no power. So that henceforth, we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him or in him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death has no more power or, domin or dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he lives unto God. So likewise, reckon or consider yourselves also to be dead indeed to, to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal or physical bodies so that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield, now this is what I quoted earlier, neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin, now listen to this, 
Sin shall not, not, shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Sin has no power over us. You don't, you say, you mean to tell me you don't sin? I don't have to. You understand what I'm saying? Sin has no power over me. I don't have to sin. I can make a choice. The word repent means to turn and go the opposite direction. When you are tempted, particularly if you've had weaknesses in the flesh of some kind, and you're being tempted by it, well, to turn and go the opposite direction is to turn from that toward God. Turn from that toward the power of redemption. Turn from that toward the power of the Holy Spirit. Toward the power of forgiveness. Toward the power of grace. There's so much power available to us. All we've got to do to keep from sin is to turn our back on that. And when I say go toward, I'm talking about get the scripture out, get the word out, begin to worship, begin to sing praises, begin to confess the word of God, get the scriptures that you need to stand on. <coughs> Excuse me. Pause. All right. Romans chapter five, verse 18. This amplified translation. Well then, as one man's trespass, one man's false step and falling away led to condemnation for all men. He's talking about Adam there. Okay, that led to con condemnation for all men. So, or just like that, one man's act of righteousness leads to acquittal and right standing with God. Well, right standing with God is righteousness. Jesus paid the price. And because he was raised from the dead and went before the Father, righteous, because he never sinned, and he represents us and we're in him, we, when we make him Lord, have right standing with God as well. We are righteous. I've heard people say, I grew up in church, and I heard people say, well, you know, we're so unrighteous, our righteousness is filthy rags. They never went on to read these verses that Jesus cleansed us from that, and now we have right standing with God. All right. And for all men. Amen. All right. But here's the problem. Not all men have chosen it. Now, when I say men, I mean mankind. Mm -hmm. I'm not segregating between men and women. I'm going to turn my power bank on there. Uh, I'm not separating between men and women. Uh, we're talking about mankind. The Bible says righteousness has come upon all men. But the problem is not all men has received. So that's why we preach the gospel. That's why we teach the word. Why? And that's why we're on the internet. And that's why we're reaching 20,000 people. Well, actually a little over 19,000 as of this morning. Mm -hmm. Why do we do this? Why do we do these services online? Because we want to reach more people and tell them about this good news. That's the word gospel means good news. Mm -hmm. We want people to know there is good news for you. If you're not sure about eternity, if you don't know if, if I died today, where would I go? Well, I found out where I was going to go. When I died back on August 8th, a year ago, I went to heaven. I was there like that. Mm -hmm. There was no hesitation. I slipped out of my body and I was there in, in this, in heaven. And, and oh man, I, it's hard sometimes to talk about it. Such a beautiful thing that I saw. But then God allowed me to come back and they revived my body. And I came back and I share that testimony as often as I can with as many people as I can. And I share the word online like this. I do this. I go through this. We, that's why we have equipment. That's why we, uh, you know, we have internet. And that's why it's a way to reach more people. I'm reaching more people right now in one week than I, I think I can honestly say that I had reached in all my ministry years from 1973 to this point. I'm reaching more people right now in in this one service today than I've reached in my whole life before I started doing this. Uh, well, actually, we started on about 10 years ago, but it wasn't until we made this move that it just began to open up for us. Mm -hmm. And that's that we're reaching people, like I said, almost 20,000 people just in this past week. And that's going to expand, and we're going to reach... 25,000 and 30,000, 50 and 100. And, and then it's going to go over into the hundreds of thousands and it's going to go into the millions. Why? Because there's a lot of people out there that need to hear this good news. Mm -hmm. and, and we're going to do it. Amen.
Amen. All right. Um, you know what? I'm not done with this series. I thought I would be today, <clears throat> but I'm not. But I see that I am getting close to running out of time. And I want to share uh, while Instagram is still here, our Instagram family, that uh, God, has, God has been so good to us. And I trust that uh, you are born again, that you are saved. If you're watching on another social media platform, uh, I trust that you're, if you haven't yet, that you will make Jesus Lord. I've shown you how. So there's no excuse. Amen. I want to pray for you right now. If you need healing in your body, we're a healing ministry. We have a healing anointing. And uh, if you need healing in your body, I want you to reach out. If you're watching on a phone or a tablet or whatever smart device you've got, I want to use that as a point of contact. Reach over and touch it. In the name of Jesus, Father, I release my faith on behalf of the listeners. Every person that has any symptoms of sickness or disease in their body, every person that's gotten a bad report from a doctor, I break the power of those bad reports. I break the power of those attacks against your body. In the name of Jesus, I command healing from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I command every symptom of sickness and disease to leave your body. I break the power of words that have been spoken against you by possibly your spouse or your family or doctors uh, or people that you've listened to. I break the power of those words right now. And even words that you may have spoken yourself that are contradictory to healing. I, I break that right now in Jesus' name. I break that curse you've been speaking. And, and I'm telling you right now, begin to declare your healing. The Bible says that Abraham was like God who spoke of things that had not yet manifested as though they had. We need to begin to speak our healing, not our sickness. We need to begin speaking the good report that Jesus already paid the price to, to bring healing into my body instead of the report the doctor might have given you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. What are you, what are you doing, Pastor? I'm praying in the spirit. I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to show me what the next step is. Um, there are a number of people that have the symptom I'm about to describe. It's uh, in your lower uh, back area on both sides. Uh, it, it could be your kidneys. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. And unless the Holy Spirit shows me, I, I don't know specifics about it other than the symptoms. You have aching or soreness in both sides of your lower back area, uh, in the areas where your kidneys might be. Uh, and I want you to put your hands on, on that part of your back right now. In the name of Jesus, I speak to those kidneys. I speak to whatever else might be uh, f functioning not properly. Whatever's causing the soreness, the aching, the pain. I curse it right now, command it to cease. I speak to the kidneys. I command them to heal, to be made whole, to function perfectly. If they've been clogged up in any way, I command that clog that's in there to be released and eliminated from your body. If the kidneys are clogged up, that I command whatever's in there to dissolve and leave and be eliminated in Jesus' name. I command the kidneys to be whole, healed, and functioning at 100% in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, we praise you this morning. We give you glory and praise and honor. Father, we know that you're here in our presence right now. And we know that there's no time or distance in prayer, no time or distance in, with faith, no time or distance in the spirit realm. And Father, even if somebody watches this program after the fact, and I don't care whether it's hours or days, weeks, months, or years, that that anointing that is flowing right now to heal them goes forth. I see eyes being healed right now. <clears throat> I see eyes. What, what I saw was, and I can't describe it to you, but it was very serious eye conditions, uh, bordering on blindness or that could, the doctors have said could produce blindness. I break the power of that over you right now. In Jesus' name, I command eyes heal now. 
in the name of Jesus from the most serious condition to just the corrective uh, eyesight, correcting the eyesight, getting the focus and death perception back working in proper order again. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. If somebody else has uh, under your right arm, this rib area right up in here, uh, you can see that on camera. Okay, right up in there, right below your armpit. Something's happened in there and you've got some pain going on in there. I bind that up in the name of Jesus. I command healing into your rib cage area, whatever that is, that's causing that pain. I command healing right now in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, we praise you this morning. We give you glory. We give you thanksgiving. Thank you for those that are listening and have been listening and will be listening. Thank you for our partners, Father, and their faithfulness in supporting this ministry. And Father, I ask you right now, just like we would do it in any church service, Father, I want to give people the opportunity to get involved with this ministry, to sow seed into this ministry. So, Father, I just ask you to speak to them and press upon them uh, what they might do. And, Father, as they do and they're obedient to it, I believe with them, according to Jesus' own words, that every person that gives and sows financial seed into this ministry receives back in this life, according to Jesus' words, a hundred times as much as they gave. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says in Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. God will cause men to give unto your bosom. Now here's interesting. In the middle of talking about giving, sowing seed, somebody's neck is being healed right up in here, right up in here, right there, right where that muscle goes up, right in there, healed in Jesus' name. Amen. I mentioned partners. Uh, if you would like to become a partner with us, uh, you, you can become a partner at any level, any amount. You know, I, I know there's people that wonder, well, what's it take to be a partner? Just takes three things. Commit to pray for us every day, as, and we'll pray for you every day if you're our partner. Commit to agree with us and use your faith with us for any particular faith projects that God gives us to do. And then support in a, on a financial basis faithfully every month. Because that gives us the ability to make plans for the future and begin to step out and reach more people, do more for the kingdom of God by having faithful partners. But there's no level amount, uh, you know, on say, well, is it $10, $20? Whatever God impresses upon you to do, just be faithful to do it. Amen? And when you do that, you have the promises of God. Now, if, if you're, if you don't have a home church and God, you begin to understand, and I, I know because I've seen it happen where God begins to deal with people about tithing, but they don't have a home church. Well, we are an online church, and I'm a pastor, been a pastor since 1970, well, yeah, 1973. Well, 77 when I began pastoring, but God called me in 1973. Uh, so we've been pastoring officially since 1973. And uh, if you want to participate with your tithe and support this ministry with your tithe, because you don't have a home church and you can't find a church that's preaching this kind of message, we'll receive it and we'll believe God for the promises of the tither, that God will open up the windows of heaven for you and pour you out a blessing that you will not have enough room to receive it all. Mm -hmm. I want to put a cover screen up over my face that will give you the information about how you can support this ministry. <laughs> At the top there, it says giving and there's is this text. Well, you can give by debit or credit card through text or email by simply texting to that number your debit or credit card information or down in the middle where it says PP there. Uh, that's our email address. You can email the same information on your debit or credit card. We'll run it. We've been doing this for about 12 years now. And uh, so we've been very safe. Nobody's ever uh, been hurt by giving this way. And uh, the moment we that card goes through for the amount you determine or tell us, uh, we will delete that information off our devices so nobody can get their hands on it. If you want to give by check or money order, uh, the second line there says mail. Uh, you make the check or money order out to CFC and mail it to CFC, Post Office Box 141074, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, 74014. 
Uh, if you have a PayPal account, uh, it's an app. You can get that and download it. <clears throat> you find us with our email address, wemmons one at gmail.com. After you enter the information, the next page, they'll ask you about friends and family. Click that so that the, that keeps them from taking out fees when they, when they transfer the funds. If you have a Venmo account, another app, uh, you can find us by typing in the at symbol, that little A with a circle around it. And then it's william emmons 10 capitalize the first letter of both names. Uh, and again, you know, debit or credit card I already mentioned. So those are the ways in which you can give now and pray about it. I mean, you know, some of you right now, you've already got a sense in your heart what God's speaking to you to do. Well, be, be obedient. Just do it. Don't put it off. We've learned about giving. To do it when you feel impressed to do it. Otherwise, the devil will talk you out of it. Amen. Hey, listen, we love you guys. Glad to have you with us. We'll announce next week what we're going to do about uh, Christmas Day service, uh, whether we're going to broadcast it on Sunday, uh, Saturday or, you know, do it on Christmas Day. But we'll figure it out and we'll let you know uh, next Sunday. Amen. It's Tuesday night. We'll be back here with our Bible study. Don't miss it. And uh, join us and uh, let us know you're here. Uh, have a blessed day. And if you if you watch football, I uh, hope your team wins. Mine's not playing today, so I don't care who wins. <laughs> just enjoy the day. Enjoy your family. And, and just be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>